Hello everyone and welcome to this next installment of uh, Stockfish's opening repertoire. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and in this video we're going to be having a look at the French and the Karakam. So e4 e6 what is Stockfish's best line? It's slightly surprising. So d4 d5 knight c3 um, and knight f6 that's not too surprising of course. Uh, knight c3 is uh, the move favoured by all of the engines and the Steinitz variation knight f6 is, um, uh, is also the main line. Um, e5, Coivisto liked um, um, bishop g5 but uh, both Komodo and um, uh, Stockfish liked um, uh, this line. c5 knight f3, knight c6, bishop e3. And um, now Stockfish likes something slightly more unusual. I mean, Bishop e7 is becoming more and more popular at the elite level. I wonder why. But, uh, you know, c takes d4 and a6 have traditionally been the main moves. Um, we'll have a look, actually, at uh, the line that uh, was Komodo's dragon favourite uh, a little bit later. But Bishop e7 is uh, Stockfish's uh, main move. a3, not very common. Queen b6, rook b1, which is, um, yeah, a, a very... Uh, um, quiet and restrained way of um, uh, dealing with black's pressure against uh, uh, b2. Um, however, you know, after takes, knight takes, castles, queen d2, well, at some stage, knight takes c6 is going to be a threat, so queen back goes back to c7, bishop to d3. Um, then um, uh, we've got a pretty typical French position here, and uh, um, to be honest, I always found that uh, you know these type of positions where white's got control of d4, but black's got this solid center on e6, d5. Um, I mean, uh, if I was in a in the right French mood, then I just played them very well as black. But um, I also had some uh, more difficult experiences where just uh, where white just ends up completely entrenched on the d4 square, and black doesn't really seem to have that much counterplay. I mean, uh, Stockfish uh, suggests knight c5. Then the bishop goes out to e2, out of the way of the knight. Um, takes, takes, b6, castles, knight e4, takes, takes, c3. Bishop b7, queen e3, h6, rook bd1, rook a d8, b4, stopping the bishop coming to uh, c5 now. And white's got a slight advantage here. Um, Stockfish gives it uh, 0.61 for white. Um, yeah, just easier for white to create counterplay. I mean, you know, potentially you could... Uh, with this center so solid you could play for something like g4 f5 or even g4 to g5 attacking that little hook on uh, on h6 so pretty interesting stuff there um again you know um a rather unusual line bishop e7 as a main line and then uh, well a rather unusual way of dealing with black's uh, pressure here you know this would normally be thought to be not very much at all but stockfish is just claiming that as long as it's got the d4 square then um, there's nothing much wrong with white's position and actually that's not such a bad thought either um so that was uh, bishop e7 but how about c takes d4 knight d4 queen b6 so this concrete line uh, was uh, komodo dragon's favorite and uh, also had a discussion on twitter with um um oh i i i've uh, I've, uh, I, I'm not sure I've got to getting his right, his first name right. Nikolaus uh, Entielis, who's uh, a well-known Greek uh, theoretician, wrote many uh, uh, interesting opening books, and he was claiming that this line was um, was actually Stockfish's best here. So, um, um, which surprised me slightly. I, I mean, I, I think uh, that the uh, the Berlin will you'll never get worse than fifty percent with the Berlin. Uh, I can't imagine this line scoring more for Black. Put it that way. But um, um, so this is uh, I just was just interested then uh, just to see what uh, what Stockfish came up with. So Bishop B5 takes takes A6. Um, this is um, uh, Black's best line. And uh, actually, there's even some Alpha Zero Stockfish games uh, um, in this line as well. Um, Stockfish 8 played um, uh, Bishop B4 most of the time, after which it scored very badly against Alpha Zero. But uh, A6, uh, it played from time to time. And uh, yeah, this was uh, scoring draws, although quite interesting stuff. So takes Rook B3, Queen E7, Rook B7. Uh, queen h4 check is uh, one of the main lines. Uh, queen d8 um, is uh, another line. And uh, rook c8 was uh, actually alpha zero stockfish here. Castles queen d8. And uh, here alpha zero played something that hasn't been played uh, uh, too much. Um, that was f5, e takes f5, and then this move queen e3, which was a novelty. 
Um, if uh, knight takes d5, then bishop c6 wins. Just nothing to be done. It feels like there should be something, but there isn't. Uh, queen d3 was a game of Voronin against Oliveira in, uh, uh, in a correspondence game. But queen e3 was alpha zero's move. Pretty natural, to be honest. Uh, you know, stopping bishop c5, uh, also maybe looking for e6. So rook c6 was the far from obvious defense from uh, Stockfish 8. Um, again, knight d5 allows this time bishop c8, hitting the rook on b7 and the knight on d5. So um, rook fb1, bishop c8, rook b6, rook c4, rook d6 from, uh, from alpha 0, really going uh, all in. Takes, takes, bishop b6, bishop g7, attacking the rook, but more importantly, stopping the black king from castling. So keeping that king in the center. Rook g8, knight takes d5. Um, it's all in here, but actually it's just ending up as a draw here. So rook g8, check there, check. Now there's already a draw by perpetual by knight f6, check. Um, obviously the engines always do their utmost to avoid uh, agreeing a draw here. But after rook d2, knight f6, check, king f8. You know, it's already getting to the point where you should be looking for a draw. And actually uh, the game ended in a sort of a, a perpetual with uh, all these things. The white king just can't escape. The rook keeps on checking. Very exciting game there, uh, in actual fact, uh, from Alpha Zero. Um, but uh, they're no more than a draw either. Um, Stockfish's main line is to go Queen d8, Castles and Queen c8, um, which uh, again has also been uh, been played. Um, rook b3, Bishop c5, f5 takes takes, Queen c4. Very important to uh, swap off the queens. And it looks like after takes takes. Rook b7 has been played in a human game, Bulmaga against Cosma, FRE Nord 2022. Um, Rook b6 was, uh, is Stockfish's main line, but again, after this, you know, you're getting the feeling of, uh, of a draw cropping up. White is a little bit better, 0.14 according to uh, Stockfish, uh, just because there's weak pawns and, uh, you know, it wouldn't be too amazing if White ended up with, with an extra pawn in a rook ending, but uh, basically it's just uh, ending up as a draw this position. So that's, um, you know, pretty interesting. And, uh, you know, um, again, it's another line of the French, basically, where uh, or another concrete line from the opening where the engines can uh, calculate this more and more uh, to a draw. But it, I don't know, feels a little bit more fraught to me than the Berlin, for example, for uh, for black. The really shocking thing is, um, just uh, curious, I made uh, a stockfish look at, um, um, at uh, the winnower. And I wondered which line it wanted. And this was quite amazing. Um, because, um, uh, well, Coy Vista was very keen on bishop a5 for quite a bit of its analysis, but eventually it went back to the, the much more normal bishop takes c3. But uh, Stockfish just never changes its mind throughout and goes for the move bishop a5, which was thought to be not so good for black. Funnily enough, um, I did have an inkling that, uh, that this line was not so bad for black because uh, I'd uh, looked at it as part of um, my... Uh, preparation for Sufi openings, super final openings, the TCC uh, 100 game match that's a sort of the climax to a season. And um, well, I thought, well, this line isn't so good. Could this be an interesting opening? And uh, I was a bit disappointed at the evaluations that were uh, coming out of uh, Stockfish and, uh, and Leela. And uh, yeah, this uh, uh, is actually Stockfish's best line in the, uh, in the winner of French. So Queen G4, King F8. Um, so there's, uh, this has been played again a reasonable amount. There's a game Andrekin against uh, Abdu Satorov, um, which went uh, uh, b takes a5, d takes c3, knight c6, bishop d3, knight e7, castles, knight g6. This is possible. Um, Stockfish's main line is knight b5, bishop b6, not bishop c7, knight f3. Knight c6, bishop b2, and f6, and um, yeah, Black's actually just trying to destroy this um, this uh, white center. And after takes, knight takes, 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 queen f6, we're hitting uh, e6 and f2, takes, takes, f4. Um, we're following a, a correspondence game here um, after f4. Um, uh, e4 was played in that game, rook c8, castles, bishop e3. King b1, d4 is um, uh, Stockfish's choice. Assesses it as 0 0.78, but um, you know the uh, it looks like uh, Stockfish manages to uh, to hold this to a draw. Um, very interesting. I mean, this is still a very interesting position. I think for both sides, very uh, very unclear, and probably chances for a win for both sides as well. 
but um, really uh, very very striking that this move Bish Bay 5 you know is uh, is um, uh, Stockfish's best it reminds me very much of uh, well we'll have a look at some lines in the Nimzo Indian where you know you play a3 and you know the best lines for black always not to take on c3 but to play Bish Bay 5 keep the tension and uh, yeah somehow an echo of this in this French winnower line so really really interesting and uh, maybe worth uh, investigating there because Bish Bay 5 not known well at all anymore that was the French, which was uh, very, very interesting. How about after e4, the Karakhan? Well, um, most of the other engines want to play um, the advance d4, d5 and e5. Stockfish is alone in wanting the move knight c3. d5, d4, and it's just playing this old-fashioned main line. Now, there's two lines. There's uh, knight f6, which is uh, the most popular nowadays, um, also being recommended in a number of books on the Karakhan and uh, that's Stockfish's main line. Let's have a look at what Stockfish wants. The, the striking thing actually is that um, uh, c3, bishop d6, this is all the main line. Um, but um, you know the thing that really um, made this line very popular at the human level was to play uh, rook e8, queen c2, and then to play this move h5. A uh, very bold move when you're uh, attacking the pawn on h7. But um, the idea simply is that if a knight comes to g3, then h4 is coming in. And this h4 to h3 lever, very alpha zero-esque. I mean, it's um, really, a, you know, a very powerful um, uh, and very inconvenient uh, uh, attack against the white king side. Stockfish doesn't want to do this in actual fact. Um, its best line against this line is to go um, rook e1, g6, and then just knight f4. Just block out like this and essentially try and uh, force black to, um, to, to to give up the bishop pair in some way. And uh, um, well, after bishop e6, we take there, takes bishop c4, queen d7, queen f4, queen f3, queen g4. A little bit of an advantage for uh, for white. Actually, this pawn on h4 is uh, is going. Um, ends up as a um, as a. Uh, 0.43 advantage for white. I mean, uh, obviously coloured bishops, but black's quite uh, quite active. Not easy for white to make progress, but still quite uh, quite interesting. And interesting that uh, Stockfish doesn't like this h5 line. It rather prefers to play queen c2 h6 simply. Um, and uh, this transposes back into its favourite move order, which is knight d7, queen c2 h6, castles rook e8, bishop e3, Knight f8, h3, bishop e6, knight f4, queen c7, queen d2, and then just Stockfish just wants to uh, take off, give the two bishops, and then just play this position. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's um, it's not amazingly exciting, I think, for black, but um, it does look pretty solid. You know, uh, Stockfish tries to gain space on the queen side here, play a4, play on the light squares, and just claim that there's nothing much wrong with the black position. You're going to exchange off queenside pawns and then play bishop f5 just to swap off. 0.48 advantage for uh, white at the end, but uh, not a very big advantage. And, uh, well, you have seen this line played by uh, top uh, players like uh, Harry Krishna, for example. So, yeah, maybe, maybe worth it. Although, I mean, I do really like this h5 line. I mean, it really felt like that gave black big winning chances as well as um, uh, drawing chances, whereas uh, h6 is much more solid. That's knight f6. Um, that's what uh, Stockfish considers to be the best line. How about um, bishop f5? Um, well, actually, uh, here Stockfish just goes for um, um, an ending that's well known. It's, it's quite funny, really. You know, I mean, um, if you're thinking, well, you know, I should have uh, a big advantage with white all the time. I should be playing, you know, very exciting chess and uh, I should be uh, attacking all the time. Then you tend to reject these lines for white and say, you know, oh, uh, you know, uh, um, oh, you know, that must be fine for black. Um, when you sort of realise that you don't really have that huge advantage from white um, in any of the mainline openings, then all of a sudden these endings where you get a slight advantage and black, you know, is only really playing for one of two results you would expect, you know, that, um, uh, you know, suddenly these ending lines become more attractive. And this is absolutely it in actual fact. So Stockfish uh, thinks that this line is, uh, is uh, white and black's best play b5 and then knight e5 and uh, well instead of rook c8 that was played in the game uh, as easy against Barbosa 2010 uh, I think white was not that uh, high rated uh, Stockfish wants uh, b takes c4 knight c4 castles knight e5 and now yeah you know just to to really make sure you hold the draw some uh, some nice accurate and active play required from uh, from black here 
Um, but still, there's always this weakness on uh, on c6. Always some um, yeah some some stuff to do from uh, from black to uh, to make sure that equality arrives. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, might be an interesting line to try. Um, you know, considering that um, you know that all of the other lines are um, you know are pretty uh, rock solid for black. Playing a, a good ending like this might just be the uh, the best solution to make this unattractive for black. And certainly, if you you know do a bit more preparation on this ending, might be a nice idea. I was just interested why uh, Stockfish didn't want to uh, to play the um, um, the main line. Um, so um, Bishop F5 uh, is the line it prefers. Uh, Stockfish Stockfish Eight played a lot of C5 lines against um, uh, Alpha Zero. Didn't um, uh, work out too well for uh, for it. Um, this Stockfish modern Stockfish likes uh, Bishop F5, and we actually get into you know one of the main lines um, of this. Uh, um, uh, of this uh, short Karakhan, this immediate c5 and then challenging everything and uh, yeah I mean this is a, a little bit of an edge for white but um, all very well known and uh, yeah you know it's not really uh, um, if black knows his stuff you're not going to be uh, able to make any wins from it I mean it's quite quite interesting but after rook d1 we're, we're in uh, quite a higher rated uh, uh, correspondence game here and uh, here instead of rook c2 that was played in the correspondence game led to a draw as well bishop d6 is uh, is what um, um, black wants here b3 rook d5 and uh, well 0.26 advantage for white nothing uh, nothing huge but this is basically you know the theoretical line that um, that a lot of people know uh, by now well this is the line that stockfish thinks is best and uh, it's basically just uh, just equality um just rounded off by having a look at the Henkin Arkel line. So that's after e5, c5, played very much by uh, the Grandmaster, English Grandmaster Keith Arkel, also by Igor Henkin, uh, Israeli Grandmaster. And um, fa Stockfish's favourite line is a line that Alpha Zero played an awful lot. Funny enough, Alpha Zero played a lot of different lines against 3, c5. It clearly had a lot of moves that considered more or less the same. But this led to a lot of very nice games from, uh, from Alpha Zero. Um, knight c3, knight b4. Now alpha zero was always playing bishop d3, you know, giving up um, uh, this uh, the two bishops, um, and then uh, playing with a good old h4 to h5, sacrificing pawns on the queen side. Gorgeous games. Take a look at um, the Silicon Road to Chess Improvement uh, game 55 in there. Uh, we do a huge amount of analysis on there. It's really interesting. Um, Stockfish prefers queen d2 actually, which uh, hadn't occurred to me, but is actually uh, quite decent. Um, a6, a3, and then bishop d3, knight e7, and rook e1. And, uh, well, for the moment, white, uh, you know, just saves the light squared bishop and, um, um, and just prepares to expand either on the king side, g3, h4, h5, who knows, or on the queen side with, um, with b4. So also very interesting indeed, but quite striking that uh, Stockfish, only one of the engines, likes this move uh, knight c3. And um, yeah, against knight f6, considers that black should just play, you know, quite uh, restrained fashion and uh, just try and uh, and hold the position. And against bishop f5, uh, you know, the full bishop f5, just tries and goes for a slightly better ending. So that could be uh, quite an interesting uh, repertory for uh, for white, I think, in um, in your own games. So there we are. That was the French and the Karakhan, according to Stockfish.